Capgemini decided that it would take a look at specifically the future consumers because so much of the future uh, is going to be changed by consumers. The coming years is going to see a huge change, I think, in the in the purchases, the way people purchase things. I type in the product or the the vague description of the product I want into Google, and then I go from there. I'm not seeing anything different. I'm not seeing anything that catches my eye. The survey showed that 85% of consumers named health and wellness as their most important underlying need. When I do my grocery shopping, I don't buy anything with antibiotics or any additives to my milk, my meat. I look at all my labels. So I prefer to buy decent food if I can. So I prefer to get organic if I can. Sometimes I'll buy it depending on the price or the quantity. Um, or if I just feel like maybe I should go organic today. In addition, consumers mentioned that sustainability will be very crucial in their beha buying behavior. Things like energy usage, water consumption, uh, sustainable sourcing, waste reduction are very important to them. I think about the environment when I'm Sort of shopping around supermarkets. I like to shop in farmers markets, try to get local produce where I can. Consumers are beginning to expect that the, the manufacturers have social responsibility, that they are going to produce in an environmentally friendly way, and they don't want to have to pay extra for that. The places I bought from in the past, they tend to do this uh, biodegradable packaging, which I was quite impressed by. You just put it under the tap and it sort of melts away. If you've got two um, products, and they're similar in price, then you would go to the more environmentally friendly. But if the price is completely different, then you possibly wouldn't. I would be willing to pay more for products that uh, were concerned with the environment, not too much more, but it is an incentive actually. Overall, consumers are familiar with new technologies like web ordering, information screens on shelves, in-store kiosks, web forums. Consumer use of the internet will grow significantly over the next decade, especially for advanced planning, research, and obviously buying. I'll go to the manufacturer websites first, check out the spec and see what options they've got, what products they've got. And then I go to the review sites to see what they say about them. And then I go to the specialist website shops and uh, compare the prices there. Last night before I came out shopping, I checked the prices of what I was going to buy. I was going to come out shopping today, see if they're more expensive here. If they were, I would go back home, order for the internet, or I'd just buy it here. If I can do the groceries online and I can get them delivered to my door, then that saves me hours and it's much more convenient for me. And it gives me more leisure time to spend with my family and do what I'd like to do or shop for what I would like to shop for. 70% of consumers say that they will buy most of their books and music via the internet. But for perishable foods, the percentage is only 20%. Only 9% of those people buying their perishable goods were satisfied with the shopping environments and the process of buying perishables. So there is a significant amount of dissatisfaction which tells the retailer and the consumer product manufacturer that in order for them to survive and thrive and win in this game, they're going to have to change the status quo. Consumers want their goods fast, at least the next day. And for perishable goods, they want it even within two hours. You sort of relinquish your control of getting the product when you order it online because you hope that it will be delivered on time and you hope that it will come to your house and you hope there are no problems. My son has size 13 shoes. We go to the mall. He can never find that pair in stock. He goes on the internet. He can get them. The problem is he's got to wait a week. And shopping is a lot about impulse and you want these pair of shoes for this particular event. The sites where the delivery takes a bit longer, I tend not to shop there again. Information sharing is a difficult thing. Um, all the retailers want it. All the consumer product manufacturers want individual data. Uh, some consumers are willing to share data, others, no way. I'm willing to give all kinds of personal information to airlines because it benefits me. 
Um, I'd be willing to give you know, information to certain retailers that I'm very loyal to, very similar to the airlines. Uh, but every retailer in the world, I'm not giving them any information. I'm already bombarded <laughs> by the email. It's actually got too much. The retailers and the, and the manufacturers that, that figure out you know, which consumer groups are willing to share data and then what to do with that data, those are the ones that are going to win. Bigger companies like Apple and Amazon, I don't mind them taking information from you because they're doing it to sell products to you that you might actually enjoy. Consumers want change. Change in the product, change in the stores, change in packaging. Marketing, supply chain, sustainability in general, things like how do you deal with multi-channel and home delivery, personalized offerings, how do you manage a true two-way communication with individual consumers using all kinds of new technologies? Those will be very interesting challenges for consumer products and retail companies. The most effective supply chains are going to involve tight collaboration, tight information sharing between the manufacturer, the uh, wholesalers, the retailers, and the end consumers. So it's going to be a world of collaboration how do we make that entire value chain much more productive and much more efficient? Consumers ultimately will decide how it will or how it will not work in the future.